Hello students, welcome back to Clary Concepts, Unleashing Conceptual Learning. You can log in to our website www.claryconcepts.com to get more details on the conceptual clarity. So today in this lecture, we will be solving or we will be rather understanding the topic called orifice meter and how do you measure the flow using the orifice meter, okay. So let's say suppose you have an industrial network and in most of the process industries, I hope all of you are aware that there are many piping networks, there are many fluids who are traveling from one location to other location in a pipe, in a pipe network. Now when the fluids are traveling, you can see there are a lot many pipes in the process industries. Now as an engineer, you must make sure that a perfect quantity of fluid at a perfect rate is flowing through a particular pipes. Now how do you make sure that? We have seen that there are several mechanical devices to measure the flow rate of the fluid flowing through all these pipes, right. One of them which we saw is venturi meter. So let's say you have the pipe through which a fluid is flowing and simply if you want to calculate the discharge or the flow rate, you can deploy a venturi meter into that. So you can simply cut down a small section of the pipe and you can insert this venturi meter and you can easily measure the flow rate of the fluid flowing through this pipe using this device called venturi meter. And how to do that? We have seen that in the previous lecture. But there is an alternative to this. Now if you look at venturi meter, what we have did? What we have done? Simply, we have just changed the cross-sectional area for a smaller length of pipe. We have reduced the area and then again we have increased the area to the mean diameter of the pipe. Now with this what happens was, with this the velocity and pressure had internal conversion has taken place and that we have monitored and that is how we have calculated the velocity flowing through the pipe and when you multiply by the cross-sectional area, you will get the flow rate. Now this is very smooth transition in the cross-sectional change in the cross-sectional area. On the other hand, you can also have some very, this is rather costlier device relatively, but if you want to measure the flow rate using a cheaper device, you still have a device called orifice meter. Now what is orifice meter? Simple, it's simple a circular disc with a center hole. Now instead of having this gradual decreasing cross-sectional area and preparing the throat and then increasing it, you simply can drill a hole in a circular disc and put that disc in the center of the pipe. Now what will happen is your all the entire flow will pass through the center hole. Now with this you what you have done you have dedicatedly drastically decreased the cross sectional area through which fluid is flowing. Now you can also use that to measure the flow rate you can calculate the velocity but on the other hand this particular orifice meter is little uh, you know uh, you, the accuracy of this flow measurement is not that good in comparison to venturi meter. But on the other hand the device is very cheaper right. Okay, so let us see how this is used. So let's say I have the pipe through which the fluid is flowing. This is a sectional view of the pipe, okay. In three dimensional, you will have a 3D kind of pipe and uh, you have inserted the orifice meter. Now when I say orifice meter, it is simple, a disc, circular disc with a center hole. So what you see these sections as the section of the disc and in the center you have the hole. The, all the fluid is passing through that, right. So let's say water is flowing. So if I draw the extreme streamlines, the water will take curvature like this and then it will flow like this, right, or any fluid, not necessarily water. So all the other streamlines will be in between these two. Now since you have reduced the area, the velocity would have been increased, the pressure would have been decreased, right. And when you want to measure that difference, you deploy the YouTube manometer for that and you have the manometric fluid in between. So let us say you have this kind of uh, arrangement where manometric fluid density is rho m and the fluid flowing through the pipe has density rho f, right. And this manometric difference is let's say hm and let's say the diameter of orifice, the minimal diameter of orifice is do and the diameter of main pipe is let's say d1, right. Now what do we do? Here also the same mechanism is there, the same new formula you will get as we did in the venturi meter. So I will not derive the final formula, I will just put the final formula what, what we have received. In the case of venturi meter, we said that Q actual is equals to CD multiplied by Q theoretical. Now what was Q theoretical? So that was Q actual equals to CD into Q theoretical was A1 into A2 under root of 2GH divided by A1 square minus A2 square, where the value of H was represented as H equals to rho m by rho f minus 1 into hm if you remember right this was the value of h but 
here there was A2. If you see A1 was the main diameter or main area of the pipe. What was A2? A2 was the area corresponding to the throat section of the venturimeter. But here there is no throat. In case of venturimeter, throat section was a minimal area. So you can here say the minimal area is DO and corresponding to DO you will have area called orifice area which is pi by 4 DO square. So you can replace this. So instead of A2, in case of orifice what you will have is just AO where AO is the area of orifice, cross sectional area of orifice. Simple. Clear? And now many a times as I said, people do not use YouTube manometer to get the uh, pressure difference at both this and upstream and downstream. So they also deploy devices called pressure gauges. So when they deploy P1 pressure gauge and then P2 over here. So in the numerical itself they will give you pressure P1 in the upstream, pressure P2 in the downstream. In that case how do you use this formula to calculate the flow rate. Then only change you will have to do is in H which we already saw in case of venturimeters lecture. H will become P1 minus P2 divided by rho fg which is basically the pressure head. So both of them are correct. So when U2 manometer is given to you, you can use this formula to calculate actual flow rate wherein this H will be this particular uh, value and if pressure gauges directly are mounted and pressures are given to you, you can use this formula to get the, uh, flow, rate of the uh, flow rate of the fluid flowing through this pipe using the orifice meter. Clear? But here only one difference will be there CD. As I said you that this orifice meter is not that great in accuracy. So you can you can always have because you are going for a cheaper device you will always lose the accuracy right. So in case of venturi meter the theoretical flow was almost 98 uh, percent accurate uh, to that of the actual value of flow rate. But here the accuracy will be almost 60 65 percentage. But you do not have to worry about that the value of CD will be provided to you by the manufacturer of the orifice meter or other designer of the orifice meter clear. They have an experimental setup to do that. So I hope you understood we will solve numericals in the next exam in the next lecture to give you more clarity on how these equations have, have to be used to calculate the flow rate of the fluid flowing through the pipe. So thank you so much with this I hope to see you in the next class. So for more such conceptual lectures you can log into our website www.clariconcepts.com thank you.